Hello everyone, hope you're having the most fantastic day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss the most dysfunctional family restaurants to be featured on Kitchen Nightmares. So sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get straight into the content guys. We're starting things off with Luigi's D'Italia. There was an arrogant chef just like me. Why are you shouting at me? I'm not shouting at you. You're not shouting That's at me, then you're not. a little bit crazy. I'm a little crazy. Because you are shouting. Luigi's D'Italia was located in Anaheim, California. It was opened in 1981 by the then 22-year-old Luigi Carizzone with financial help from his father, Dominic. Um, hold on a minute. You're not 22. I'm 51. I'm reading the latest report on your website, a youthful maestro. 22 years of age in the kitchen. Do you have a son in there? Yeah, this was in 1981. 1981? Together, they made a success out of the restaurant until finally Dominic decided to call it a day and retire to Italy. He also decided to bring Luigi's brother, Tony, from Italy to the US, where together the brothers would run the restaurant as a family. But that was the beginning of their troubles. The brothers didn't see eye to eye. When Gordon Ramsay sat down with the family to find out what the problem was, Luigi and his wife Grace told them that Tony and his wife Linda were just lazy. The couple accused them of watching TV and slacking off when they were supposed to be on duty. What happens is when Tony is here, we're sitting around. No, we're looking at the TV. Watching TV when customers come? Is that true? I don't, I don't think it's true. Grace saw Tony as a bloodsucker leeching off the business while Luigi worked hard to keep them afloat. The two families were so at odds that they had to work on separate days. Tuesdays, Tuesdays, on Wednesdays, I run the place, and then on uh, Thursday nights through Sunday nights, uh, they run the place. Wow, it's crazy. Tony ran the restaurant from Mondays to Wednesdays, while Luigi ran it from Thursdays to Sundays. On the other hand, Tony had a different view on the matter. According to him, Grace was awful to the customers and they actively avoided coming in when she was working. Tony accused her of being rude to the customers, even telling them to F off. In response to the accusation, Grace turned into a screeching demon yelling at Tony for lying. It was rather shocking. Out of here. No! I don't say that! I don't say no! Don't tell me this Say that to no! That's what you said. No! I don't say This is what happened. At the time of filming, the couple was $1.5 million in debt and was still losing money. After watching the family do everything short of tearing each other's throats out, Ramsey ordered some food from the kitchen. His ravioli came stuffed with some kind of pre-made cheese that was unknown to even the waiter. And the five cheeses are? Uh, I'm not sure. Well. Wow. It's a pre-made ravioli. So they're not homemade? They're, those are not homemade. He certainly had to go into the kitchen and find out, but whatever it was was horrible and didn't even taste like cheese. Next was the Mahi Mahi, which turned out to be greasy mush. Last was the Linguini, and boy was it weird and disgusting. Luigi's response to Ramsey's critiques of his food was, if you don't like the food, then get the F out. A pretty weird take for someone who sought out some help, right? Luigi didn't take anyone's feedback nicely, not even during the dinner service when customers kept returning their food since it was awful. He had 30 years of experience running a restaurant and somehow still didn't know how to cook. Ramsey then proceeded to have a talk with the staff and they revealed that Luigi and Grace were the main problem. The owners yelled at the staff and customers and weren't taking the lead with their team. Ramsey showed the two brothers and their wives a video of his conversation with the staff and it went pretty well until Grace saw them talking about her. Her reaction was more over the top crying and screaming. She broke down in tears and nearly quit because she didn't feel respected as the boss. I gotta work here. I wanna just quit. I don't, I don't think I wanna be here anymore. I'm feeling so bad. But Ramsey did come through and calm her down and brought the family and staff together, getting them to agree to work as a team. Ramsey remodeled the restaurant to an Italian theme with a more straightforward menu. On the night of the relaunch, Tony and Luigi managed to make it a successful one despite some minor hiccups. All right, on to the next entry being Sam's Mediterranean Kebab Room. In this episode, Gordon Ramsay visits Sam's Mediterranean Kebab Room located in Monrovia, California. The restaurant was located just 30 minutes northeast of downtown Los Angeles and was owned by Sam Najjar who ran it together with his family. Najjar had dreamed of owning a restaurant since 1982 where he worked as a busboy and dishwasher. He realized that dream in 1997 when he succeeded in buying the restaurant. Business was good at first, but things deteriorated and in 2012 they called on the services of Ramsay. They were $70,000 in debt and desperately needed help. Najjar had seven children in total, all of which worked at the restaurant, and all for free. 
What did they get in return? A free lodging at their father's house. What a nice little arrangement. Give me a break. The children were full-time staff working seven days a week with no pay. It's no wonder none of them wanted to work anymore. They had to put their dreams on hold for the sake of their father. Even before Ramsey got to the restaurant, Najar's five children accosted him outside his hotel to tell him how much they disliked working at the kebab. According to them, he was to blame for all the family arguments in the restaurant. Ramsey then went to the restaurant to meet the man himself and discover what the problem really was. First off, the decor was old, depressing, and dilapidated. That theme continued with the food. Ramsey first ordered a veggie combo. That turned out very poorly because the eggplant was canned and the rest of it was unseasoned. He also tried a quote unquote anemic lamb shank and overcooked steak and shrimp doused in butter. It was a horribly poor effort from the kitchen. Ramsey decided to see the kitchen for himself and he was disappointed to find huge trays of chopped flavorless parsley, rotting lettuce, and some very flexible soft cucumbers. This Mediterranean restaurant wasn't serving fresh produce at all. The dinner service afterward was chaotic as the children couldn't stop arguing. The chefs, who were Najar's sons, sent out raw steak when the customer asked for a medium. Ramsey managed to intercept a raw chicken that was about to be served to an unsuspecting customer. As it turns out, even the children were incompetent, but can you really blame them with the lack of pay? It was a hard pill for Najar to swallow, but he managed to come to terms with the truth. Now it was time for Ramsey to work his magic. He gave the kebab one of the most expensive transformations on Kitchen Nightmares ever. He provided them with new carpets, chairs, tables, repainted walls, and a new modern Mediterranean menu. Customers raved about the food, and Najar finally began looking for new workers to replace his family. And as our final entry, we're gonna cover Finn McCool's. I'm fing standing right here, I'm doing what I gotta do. Watch your mouth, watch your mouth. Get out of here. Yeah, would you care to take care of this ticket then? In this Kitchen Nightmares episode, Gordon Ramsay heads over to West Hampton, New York to bring the dying Finn McCool's back on its feet. It was a family-themed restaurant owned by Buddy Mazio, a retired policeman. He ran Finn McCool's with his two sons, Brian and Jason. Brian was the head chef and Jason was the manager. The waitress was Jason's wife, Melissa. Ramsey arrived at West Hampton to find the town sleepy and desolate, but this was because it was winter time. The town also had less than 2,000 residents, which didn't help out that much either. However, the town would come alive during the summer when tourists flocked in because of its white sand beaches, high-end shopping, and lavish dining. Unfortunately, lavish dining was not what Ramsey found at Finn McCool's. Instead, like the town, the restaurant was lifeless and the food ghastly. Their shepherd's pie was a greasy, disgusting affair that sent Ramsey to the toilet vomiting. Second door on the left. Oh. <coughs> oh no. Nothing was good at Finn McCool's and the locals declared that the food was all fried. It seemed the fryer was their answer to everything. When the sous chef Francis dropped a chicken wing, he threw it back into the fryer and informed Ramsey that the fryer would sterilize it. Now, while this may be true, it was nonetheless very unsanitary, just like their moldy and filthy kitchen where they had the gold to keep a copy of Ramsey's cookbook. The book was perhaps the only flattering thing about their kitchen. The food was improperly stored with raw meat sitting on top of cooked meat. Some containers were filled with strange and smelly concoctions. Some had old, decrepit, and possibly lethal food. Things were not looking good for the Finn McCool's restaurant. They immediately had to clean the kitchen before they could begin their first service. Only firemen showed up, which isn't too surprising when you have bad food in a town of 2,000 people. The firemen waited for nearly an hour and still received cold food. Ramsey then challenged the head chef Brian to a shepherd's pie cook-off, which he won via unanimous decision by the staff. Brian felt insulted by this and walked off, leaving Buddy to run the kitchen by himself, which was disastrous. With Brian gone, Buddy finally understood the pressure his son was under in the kitchen. With that, the family reconciled and prepared for the relaunch of their restaurant. Ramsey prepared a new modern menu and revamped the restaurant into a family-themed eatery. On the day of the relaunch, the firemen, their chief, some extra locals, and a food critic were in attendance. Brian was quickly overwhelmed and customers were kept waiting for at least an hour for their food. Some, including the fire chief, expressed their wishes to leave. Other guests weren't even seated yet, making this a mess. However, everyone rallied together and somehow they managed to pick up the slack and turn everything around to make it a success. Even the critic enjoyed the food. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. 
Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one guys.